um, there was a lot more competition, right, in the workplace because people did have to climb to the top, whereas now we have more information. There's more opportunities. There's different things that we're doing. Not everyone's trying to get the same job anymore because there's lots more jobs. And so it's almost like we're in this shift now, too, where this, yes, there's still competition. I, th I don't think that's ever going to, you know, leave our system, right? And, and a little bit of healthy competition is probably not a bad thing because it keeps us all kind of in check and doing our thing. But it's understanding what's the healthy competition versus the, I'm going to, you know, rip you off the ladder so that I can climb up ahead of you. Obviously not good competition, right? We want to be able to create it in a way that motivates us to move forward, motivates us to take those action steps that we're nervous to take or to push us forward and say, hey, you know, I did what we said we were going to do. Have you done it yet? Oh, okay. Now I've got to go do it, right? And so it, there's ways to harness this in a really positive light too. It doesn't have to be like competition that's bad. It can be competition that's actually really healthy and good and nurturing for us as well. Right. Especially when it comes to gate 51, the gift here is initiating that whole channel that I have from the heart to the G center is the channel of initiating of initiation and the, the essence, the city here is awakening. So when we ignite that, and it's really not about, you know, this is not a manifesting manifest or manifesting channel about initiating new things. This is more about letting life initiate you into what you need to do or need to do for the tribe, really. Um, so it's a beautiful capacity to, you know, especially in this time, awaken. Um, just in a couple hours, we enter into gate three transit of the sun, which is about chaos into order. So if you are feeling competitive, if you are feeling like there's chaos all around, like really tap in to the initiating, especially if you have this gate and how can you initiate to find order, to make order from that chaos? Uh, mm -hmm. So I think it'll be an interesting week, especially for everyone with gate 51. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. And mine, I don't have that um, opposing gate in the G center either. Can I, so I've got nothing, but I do get to harness that energy as it comes through, which means I get to now utilize that in ways that hopefully allow me to take initiation or action on things that I'm excited to. But again, for me, it's coming back to what is my next aligned action and not falling into looking outside of myself or falling into that competition. Well, that person's doing that. So I've got to do that too. And instead being like, well, is that right for me? Is that my heart's desire? Do I see myself having the energy to see that through once I do create that initiation? And that's something for all of us to think about because initiating is awesome, but not when you initiate it and then you're like, oh, and now I'm stuck doing this for the next whatever, whatever. <laughs> Right. And again, the importance of your strategy and authority, because yes. if you check in with your strategy and authority, like for me, my strategy is waiting for the invitation. And then my um, authority is to feel it out, to sleep on it. So if I am acting impulsively and I'm like, I'm going to start this. Nobody gave me an invitation. I didn't give myself to think about it. I am just being very impulsive and acting on it. Let me tell you, it is not going to feel good. I'm going to fall into bitterness. I'm going to be miserable. There's going to be regret. There's probably going to be some um, conditioning on myself of my own self-worth, right? Depending on, on what stories and beliefs I'm holding on to. So mm -hmm. always coming back to your strategy and authority, where for me, if there is an invitation and I sleep on it and the next day it's still there, I'm still thinking about it. It is still a yes. It's still feeling really good. I have everything that I need to initiate that and that's going to help me find success. Yeah, I love that. That's such a good spot to end on there, right, Jen? Is just like coming, always coming back, no matter what we're talking about here with your any of your defined, undefined centers, your decision-making process is your strategy and authority. And if you override that because you're like, well, my heart says this right now, check in, right? Check in and make sure because that's what will lead you to burnout. And I don't know, I'm sure you've experienced burnout, Jen. I've experienced burnout because I didn't know about any of this stuff before. And it's so easy, even when you do know about it, it's so easy to just make those moves forward before you're truly ready because everyone else is telling you to, or your brain is telling you to, instead of trusting into your body. And it's coming back to the trust, that big word of trust, of trust in your body, trust in the process, trust in where you're at. But that's hard when we've been taught to make decisions with our mind. Yeah. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So on that note, I would love to invite everyone to join our human design Q&A call, which is happening next week, correct? Yes, the 23rd. Um, So if you're interested, drop a Q&A in the comments and we'll make sure that you get the link to sign up. It is free. It is one hour, noon to one Eastern time. Again, next Tuesday, we do these every month. So if you're interested in that, let us know. And Mistral, do you want to talk about the other exciting new thing we have going? Oh yeah, I did drop it in my stories this morning because I got really excited about it. We are going to start running a planning workshop. So this is kind of under developments, under wraps. This is kind of like join the wait list if you're ready to get excited about it. But for someone like myself, um, for lots of different reasons in my chart, I struggle sometimes with goal setting and being planning and moving forward. And I have a lot of tools and techniques and Jen and I are going to share these with you, how we can utilize our human design to really set up some goal setting daily tasks and different um, ways to track your cycle or track your emotions and use your human design chart to really allow you to find a schedule that allows you to go from here to here, whether that's in career, business, just mental health, like we have got you covered in how you can plan using your human design and feel so good about it and not feel so chaotic and all over the place before. I'm a manifesting generator. I need that. I'll be there, right? I have no problem admitting that I'm not perfect and that as I learn all of these practices, I get to reshare them and with you all so that you can have better experiences too. Yeah. And we're so excited just to hold and foster this space. I'm really excited to share my wisdom with everyone as a treatment planner within therapy and mental health for 10 years to really help you all goal set and then have the accountability, right? To have this little group for the month, ongoing months to really make sure that you're following through, that you are being held accountable, that you are tapping into your gifts, anything that you need to help you reach those goals. So we are so excited to start sharing those. 